I want to show you some books that are absolutely amazing. These are books that you can use to learn different areas of mathematics. And all of these books are for beginners. So these are not super advanced books. If you know some mathematics, you might be able to jump into one of these books. So let's go ahead and take a look at all of these books. We'll talk about how you can learn using these books and what these books can teach you because you can learn so much knowledge from math books. It is just completely insane. Like if you were able to absorb all of the knowledge that is in these books and just like absorb it into your mind, you would know so much mathematics. This one is called Basic Mathematics and it was written by Serge Lang. This book took me a very, very long time to buy because this book is not super inexpensive. Um, no matter what, even if you get it used, it still costs around the same amount. So I ended up getting a new copy and this book actually has answers in the back. So check it out, it has answers to selected exercises. So you get answers, which is really, really useful, right? You can check your work uh, to a lot of the problems. Uh, I, I feel like it's quite a few. So Serge Lang uh, provides these answers, which is amazing. A lot of his other books don't have answers like this. So to have all of these answers, I mean, look at that. Yeah, wow. Detailed solutions. Wow, I gotta give it a whiff, just, oh, smells so good. Here's a brief look at the content so you can see what you can learn with this book. So it starts with numbers, then linear equations, real numbers, quadratic equations, and then logic. So very different from other math books. In fact, uh, there's no other math book um, that's like this, right? This book is very, very different. Um, this is not a book you would use for a course, I think. I, I don't know of any courses that use this book because it covers such a unique set of topics. Some geometry, some trig. It's got an entire section on sine and cosine, right? Very strange, not typically how it's presented. Typically you learn trig in a pre-calc course uh, using a pre-calc or a trig book. It's got induction, determinants, and there's an index. Notice it doesn't say anything about the answers, but it does have uh, those answers uh, in the back uh, of the book. The layout of this book is very, very clean. Um, by that I mean it's just very easy to read. Like there's just like the right amount of spacing. It's not wordy, it's to the point and it's elegant. And that's something I've always liked about Serge Lang's books. He gets to the point. There's not a lot of like extra fluff. It's straight to the point and I think that makes it awesome. Also it has good exercises. Some of the exercises are really easy. Some of them are a little bit harder. You're going to find a lot of non-standard problems in this book in certain sections because it's a non-standard book, right? This is not a book uh, that you would use for a course. So you could use this for self-study. This is one of those big, thick pre-calc books. This is the one by Sullivan, and it's a thick, heavy book, and it's a hard cover. I really like that this is a hard cover, whereas the Serge Lang book is a soft cover. But I'm told, I'm told that there is a hard cover in existence. I don't own it, uh, but I'm pretty sure it exists. If you happen to have a hard cover of this book, by the way, please let me know. Uh, I've never seen one, but I'm pretty sure it exists. Anyways, this is a great book for anyone who knows some algebra. So in order to uh, use this book, it helps if you have a little bit of algebra in your background. Let's take a look at the contents. This book can be used to learn both pre-calculus and trigonometry. And typically in colleges in the US, a book like this would be used for a pre-calc course and for a trig course as well. Very, very basic stuff, uh, very standard. Again, this is the stuff you'll actually learn in college courses. So graphs, functions in their graphs, polynomial and rational functions. There's a lot of overlap here between college algebra and pre-calc. So you do get a good review of perhaps a lot of things you already know, and there's nothing wrong with reviewing. Exponential and logarithmic functions, and then trig functions. So if you were taking a trig course, you would basically start here in chapter five, right? So you can, in theory, start from here and then, and then work your way through analytic trigonometry, applications of trigonometry, some polar coordinates, hyperbolas and stuff like that, ellipses. So here you get the conic sections, systems of equations and inequalities, sequences, induction, the binomial theorem, counting and probability. And then this is cool, it's cool because it's got like a little bit of calculus in it. I love pre-calc books that actually have, you know, some pre-calc, some, some uh, just a tidbit of calculus in the book, just to give you a taste. Not all pre-calc books do that. And uh, I remember the first time I saw a book that did that, I was really excited. And, 
it is exciting that this does actually have limits and stuff, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at that stuff right now. Here you can see the book actually does teach you some calculus, which is really cool. Here's the tangent problem. So you have a tangent line at a point, really cool. And then you work on finding the slope of that tangent line and that's called the derivative of the function. This book also has really good exercises. So like if you're taking another math class and you want additional practice, you can just go straight to the exercises and then you can do some for practice. And then what you can do is you can check your answers in the back of the book. So yeah, this is amazing. I wanna emphasize that this is a textbook too. So someone asked a comment, they said, why do you always say textbook? What do you mean what other kinds of books are there? Well, there's other kinds of books like workbooks. Those are smaller books that are less expensive and they're soft cover and you can write in them. Whereas a textbook like, like this one, this is comprehensive. This has more material than what you would learn if you took a pre-calculus course and a trig course in college because everything in this book is more than what you can possibly learn in a course. So yeah, just a ton of knowledge, perfect for self-study. This one is legendary. It has been around for a long time. Look at this, 13th edition. And notice the name of the book, it's called Thomas Calculus. That's because this book is based on the work of George Thomas. George Thomas wrote a book called Calculus many, many years ago. I have some older editions of his book and it has been revised multiple times and this is the result. Now, there's key differences between uh, this edition and the older editions. Which one's better? I, I say get whatever you can get, right? I have some old ones and I have uh, this new one here. There are differences in the explanations. This has some content that the old versions don't have and the old versions have some content that has been taken out that is no longer in the new version. Which one's better? They, they're both really good, I think. And you can see here, based on the original work by George B. Thomas Jr., MIT, right? So he wrote this legendary book called Calculus and it was so good, it was so popular that even to this day, these people here have been revising it and working through it. So this book can be used to learn Everything that you would learn in Calculus 1, 2, and 3, at least in the US, if you went to college. Let me just show you some of the topics. It starts with functions, then it goes to limits and continuity. So all Calc 1 courses typically start here. Derivatives, applications of derivatives, and then you've got integrals, applications of definite integrals, integrals and transcendental functions, some integration techniques. A lot of these things you would study in a Calc 2 course. You've got some differential equations, this, again, this is Calc 2 here, sequences in series, some parametric equations. And then Calc 3 stuff starts uh, here, vectors and the geometry of space. So this is stuff that you would learn in Calc 3, multivariable calculus. It's got partial derivatives, multiple integrals, integrals and vector fields, and then some second order DEs. Typically you don't cover the DEs when you take a calculus course. Um, I used to cover it a little bit in my Calc 1 courses near the end, but really basic stuff. And then you have answers to the odd numbered exercises in the back of the book, which is awesome because that way you can check your work, right? Which is super useful. Look at all of these answers. Wow, right? It's just completely insane. So this book contains tons of exercises, tons of examples, and yeah, it's, it's worth owning. This is a great calculus book. You can use this book to learn calculus. With this book alone, you can make some serious progress. Now, compared to other books on calculus, like the one by Stewart, or the one by Larson, or the one by Briggs, or Swakowski, there's all kinds of great calculus books. This is just another one, and it's one that has withstood the test of time. Again, it's based on the work by George B. Thomas. Now, the explanations in this book are good explanations. They're the explanations that you would expect from a solid calculus book, so not everything will make sense upon first reading as is the case with most math books, but it's worth it for what you can understand. It's got a lot of examples, a lot of exercises, and it's got answers in the back to the odd numbered problems, which make it perfect for self-study. How do you learn math with these books? Well, once you get a book, what you should do is try to sit down and at least do one problem a day. You know, you can say 30 minutes a day or an hour a day or two hours a day. That's great if you can get yourself to do that, but I think it's easy to tell yourself, hey, I'm gonna do at least one problem today, at least one math problem. So you pick up a book and you sit down and you do a math problem. And once you get going, a lot of times you're gonna find that you're gonna spend more time doing mathematics. You won't just do one problem, you'll do 10 problems or 20 problems, you know, depending on the difficulty level and how much time you have. But if you do a little bit of mathematics every day, I think that's really the best way to learn. 
You know, I had this teacher once uh, a long time ago. He was a really good teacher. I remember it was in his office. And there was a student there, and the student says, how, how can I get really good at this? I'm trying to learn. And the teacher said, well, if you do a little bit of mathematics every day, just work on it a little bit every day. And I thought, wow, that's great. I don't do that, but what a great idea. And I didn't really take his advice, but I should have, because that's how you learn mathematics, right? By doing. And if you do a little bit every day, you're going to get there. You're going to get there. Anyways. I hope this video has been helpful. These are awesome math books. I will try to leave uh, links in the description of this video in case you want to check out these books. They're all awesome and I think they're great. Until next time, good luck. Keep doing mathematics. Forgot to mention another way to learn math is through courses. I do have courses. Check them out if you want to. They're on Udemy, but please use the links from my website if you do check them out. My website is freemathvids.com. There's a link in the description. Just check it out. And yeah, I've got courses on algebra, calculus, differential equations, etc. So it's another way you can learn mathematics. Also, if you want to subscribe, if you feel you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. The key takeaway from this video should be that these are all awesome math books and you can use them to learn tons of mathematics. Good luck. Keep doing mathematics.